you could hear these noises in, in the next field, the caravan park, and I never knew what these noises were, but when I look back through the history books now, I used to ask my mum and dad what these noises were, so don't worry about it. So when I look back, uh, we went to the library, looked at old newspaper articles, between the years of 1978 and uh, 1987, there was a horrendous spate of livestock eviscerations and maimings in that area uh, and it was all put down to the Bamber Beast. Terrible, terrible things. And I used to hear these noises like it was like, like a low punch, low pitched kind of like and then a quick awful. <laughs> <laughs> And so this is a, yeah, it's a Bamber Beast, it was put down the Bamber Beast, uh, many articles. And the, uh, the Bamber Beast was only finally, uh, it, it only stopped when a farmer ran over the beast, uh, completely by accident, on a moped. And it turned out the thing was just, it was like a tiny little land-based squid with uh, one hoof. <laughs> <laughs> so, which sent Bamber into a real tailspin because he had all the gift, the gift shop had all these books and you know, had it, it's like a great big horse. And, you know, it's a big disappointment for all the <laughs>
Kader. Anybody like Roy Orbison? The big, the big hole. Um, well, this is. Uh, it's kind of like a cover, it's like a medley. I'm not going to do that, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes uh, uh, an object can become infused with magic, like uh, like a letter is an obvious one, or a, or a item of clothing. Uh, it's often when a person goes away or dies, or or maybe uh, I don't know, like like a rude thing. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean, though. Um, like a, yeah, or a shoe, a pair of shoes. Such 
to my band. Uh, We've well, already met a couple of them. On drums, Gene Finley. On uh, 
That's my grandma. And, uh, yes. Oh yeah, that's another thing I decided I was going to throw into sets from now on, was in the middle of songs. Just, uh, I played with this guy called Jury Wheel in uh, Alst a few days ago, which was my first time out of the country as an adult. Uh, and this guy was amazing playing Hurdy Gurdy. But every song you'd be like, and now you're wrong, and then at the end of the line, hey, just out of nowhere. <laughs> so I need one, I need something like that. So I thought about just yes. <laughs> so clear yes. <laughs> you know, if, if anybody comes up with anything. But anyway, pipe down, grandma. <laughs> and uh, double bass, it's my granddad, Duncan Finley. And then we have. Uh, my cats from when I was a boy. <laughs> uh, double bass, Bonnie. <laughs> Bonnie lives to be 21, and she just disappeared at Christmas. It's, uh, you know, she always went in and out. You know, like when your when your granddad's car gets rusty, but he keeps painting it with house paint, and eventually it becomes a massive car. On <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, alto sax, Bonnie's daughter, Smokey. She lived to be 19, and uh, she stayed at home to die. I buried her in the back garden, and then when my mum and dad had the garden done over, they had to dig down, and she was gone. She was in a plastic bag, but she was gone, so I don't know what happened there. Uh, and uh, he, he, uh, please meet Tumble. Tumble was my cat, she got knocked down. <sighs> Uh, it was one of those things, you know in your life when you meet, you meet uh, like an ancient soul and you, you recognise each other. Uh, I've only had it a few times with humans and once with a cat and uh, uh, thrice with a horse. Never with a horse, never with a horse. Uh, so yeah, please meet Tumble on Double Bass. And, uh, I've got a couple of guys I don't recognise here as well, I guess they must be like great, great granddads or something like that, but uh, they're all on double bass, everyone's on double bass. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
try no more conceited bill. So up stepped Ned to test his skill. He whacked the poor thing on the nose. He sprained his wrist and bloodied his clothes. Poor old horse, poor old horse. Hear what they did to the poor old horse. The foreman came then with his knife, determined for to take its life. He took his aim and thrust it home. Alas, he hit the collarbone. Poor old horse, poor old horse. He what they did to the poor old horse. They with a rusty spade, then all upon it heavily laid. To quell the struggle each did their part, until the blade had reached its heart. Poor old heart, poor old horse, hear what they did to poor old horse. Now we cheat goes a separate path for a cup full of ale or a nice hot bath. A kiss on the lips of a wife newly wed or a look at the baby sleeping in like a little mistake, you just like, look, just <laughs> look confident. And if you make a big mistake, just like abuse yourself basically, swear really loud and kick, up, kick a glass over, <laughs> and then everyone feels too afraid to uh, <laughs> do anything about it. Uh, that's not going to happen tonight. I might make mistakes, but I'm not going to uh, kick anything. Not too loud, do you think, or? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I played in London with a guy who played, uh, he opened up and he came in on stilts. A guy called Itchy from Bristol, do you know him? Yay! What a hero. Uh, I had no, I mean, when he finished his set, we were playing a ping pong ball and then in the Caribbean drum and then hitting it in the audience and wee and all this stuff. I just oh, fuck. <laughs> no, I'm fucking your top line guy. <laughs> yes, I liked him a lot. And he had his little one there as well, the little uh, little baby. Mm -hmm. sleep. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sometimes I get angry about, I try not to get angry, I don't think it's a good way in general. Um, I get, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to talk about the different things in, uh, when you go in Holland, instead of a chute, like a hole, they have a little platform in the toilet. And so you can, so it just sits there. <laughs> and so you, you can inspect your poo. <laughs> I like that. Uh, and also, uh, the mm, 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 three times, and then po posh people once, Belgian once, English handshake. And, uh, that, that looked wrong. <laughs> handshake and then pull. Good one pull. <laughs> so, yes, hello, sir. Uh, uh, high five. I like a high five. Um, what was I saying before that? Something about touching. <laughs> I do get angry about uh, uh, my daughter when she is going to be old enough to meet. Um, guys, and start going out. Like 16, 17, it's a little way off yet. Uh, seeing guys, and she says, My daughter doesn't exist yet, I uh, don't have a daughter. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> when she's, I, I imagine my daughter in the future. She said, like, okay, Dad, I'm going to go out. Really? Are you going to go out? Be back by 10. She's back 10, 10 to 10. Next week, she's back 5 past 10. The week after that, 20 past, she's starting to push her boundaries. It's typical, it's normal with teenagers. <laughs> uh, and then suddenly, one week, it's like half 11, I get a text, Dad, I'll be on getting a taxi on my friends. I just can't stand the thought of these young guys who are so clumsy, they don't even know what they're doing. They've learned everything from porn on the internet because it's so readily available and they're doing all of these things to my little girl with their clammy hands and it makes me feel fucking sick. <laughs> so, but I don't want to be that kind of dad. I don't want to be a controlling dad. Uh, I have a sense of my daughter in the future. I think she might be, it's either my daughter or a dog. But it's good, I think. Uh, I don't mean I don't mean to say anything like my daughter's gonna be ugly. I don't like that term for a lady. It's not nice. I just mean I, I quite like a dog and I quite like a daughter. That's pretty much it. Well, both. There's no reason I can't have both. And I hope I treat them both well. And thank you. And good night. <laughs> I think that might be the first female one I've had so far. Uh, it's an old song. I uh, heard the Anne Briggs version and uh, Stephanie Ladowski in Bradford sings the most amazing version of this song. It's worth checking out. The king had been a prisoner and a prisoner long in Spain and Willie of the Winsbury had long with his daughter been laid Father dear 
Cast off your paper gown. Stand naked on the stone. So I may know you by your shape, whether you be a maiden or no. So she cast off her very brown gown, stood naked on the stone. I could buy no longer clad all in red silk his hair was like the strands of gold his skin was as white as milk now I understand Janet, 
I'll make you the Lord of my life. Oh yes, I will marry your daughter, Janet. Janet, but I'll not be the Lord of your land. And he's mounted around a milk white steed himself a dapple. And he's made her the lady of just as much land as she can ride on a warm summer's day.
somebody but it doesn't happen that often but <laughs> and they they give you compliments like you have a nice amount of hair on your chest <laughs> okay. I'll take that I'll take that <clears throat> anyway this uh, this isn't the move this isn't the move to design to uh, to arouse you it's just to make you feel hot <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm working on this, well I finished it, this, uh, excuse me, this project which involved going into the Discovery Museum in Newcastle, pardon me, and, uh, and uh, looking through, I could look through whatever I wanted and then I had to respond with uh, half an hour of music. One of the things I found was a scrapbook from 1791 full of stories on murders and trials and uh, executions and politics, abolition of slavery and stuff like that. And uh, also songs and recipes and uh, poems. But right, yeah, recipes like a drink for your cow, that kind of thing, <laughs> written in lovely hand. <coughs> uh, one of the songs that I... Well, poems came across was this, this, uh, this one called Joe the. I feel a bit sheepish now about my body. Uh, Joe the quilt maker, uh, about a guy who lived in Hexham. I wrote the song based on this poem, and then just about when I was finished the song, I was flicking through uh, Quilts and Coverlets magazine, and I came across this article <laughs> about this story, and it turns out it was all, all real. What happened? It's a bit of a slog, this song, uh, so uh, yeah, don't, don't worry, if you don't enjoy it, feel free to, now would be the time to get a drink, I guess, <laughs> this is the real low point. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't feel like singing this song to you because you, because we're in a cheerful mood. I think it's nice. So uh, I'll just tell. Joe is a guy who lived in, in the eighteen twenties, and he was an old man, and he was a master quilt maker. He was a beloved husband, and he had a bad end, but he had a really good life before that. And here's a complicated song, and we can just scratch out the last few. <laughs> 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 It's been a year since last we met We may never meet again I have struggled to forget But the struggle was in vain For her voice is on the Spirit comes at will in the midnight on the seas. Her bright smile haunts me still in the midnight on the seas. Her bright smile. Haunts me still. I have. 
of sail the fallen sky, and I've charted hazards path. I have seen the storm arise like a giant. eye condition called excellent retinoschisis, which is a form of macular dystrophy. Uh, it's a... Uh, this don't worry, this is one of my best bits of banter. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, it's like a hereditary thing. Um, so my eyesight's getting a bit... hot. But I feel like me again. <laughs> uh, my eyesight's getting a bit worse. I, I knew, knew it would, uh, but it's getting worse in the most unexpected way. So it's not a sad thing. It's, a, it's just a thing. People have got much bigger things to deal with uh, than this. Uh, so the, the ways in which it's changing, I can still see the same amount of things, but the quality of the picture's changing. Oh, that was ridiculous, sorry. <laughs> it's good. I thought, because yesterday I had the inner voice in Brighton. Inner voice where you go like, ah, no, and then it just goes, shit. Sure. No, I mean, like, oh, you're a fraud. <laughs> Whereas tonight, I'm just, I haven't got the, I've got the outer voice. So I'm not, which is much better. Uh, so I'm getting these things like, uh, like snow on a TV, like, uh, like fuzz and, uh, and also interest in visual hallucinations, like sometimes when I shut my eyes I can see these strange tiled board games almost, these like Chinese objects, very odd objects. Uh, so this is about that and other things besides. <laughs> and it's 11 o'clock so I think I'm going to make this the last one. Uh, it, it really is an honor to be, uh, it's, it's a real honor. Thank you.
the night by a terrible sound I thought the moon had fallen down, fallen down from its moorings Every single building in the town was somehow changing shape A sphere of stone or a ball of wood